Yavapai Broadcasting and the City of Cottonwood proudly present Inside Cottonwood, an inside look at the decisions and issues of the City of Cottonwood. Brought to you by Arizona Smile Designers. Welcome to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Mayor Diane Jones, your host, and we have very special guests today on Inside Cottonwood. They are Barbara Uran, who is the superintendent of Cottonwood Oak Creek School District. Oh, thank you Welcome. for having me. Thank you. And Dr. Paul Tai, who is the brand new superintendent at Mingus Union High School this year. And already um, hit the ground running and, and ready to conquer and, and <laughs> do everything he can to provide a great education to the students of our community. Happy to be here. The treadmill's going at full speed already. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, we're here today to talk about something called the override continuation election. And we want to help the public understand the facts, what it is and what it means. And so we've got about a half an hour here today to learn about the facts of an override election. And our community, this is not foreign to our community. We've passed these elections for the past 20 years, as I understand it. So it's something that our community has been behind its kids. As the mayor of Cottonwood, I always say we support our children. And I'm that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I feel that our citizens care very much about our kids and so we're going to learn today just the facts um, about the override. So first of all, either one of you, what is an override? What does that mean? Oh, thank you. you want me to Go for it. Thank you. Um, an override is a mechanism that the state allows school districts to request from their community to exceed the limits on their budgets. We are given a budget. We cannot exceed that budget. However, we can go to our community and ask for 10%, 15% increase that is actually taxed to the community to help offset and provide other programs for students. So an override is something that majority of the districts in the state of Arizona do ask their communities for. Uh, our governing boards met together as a group and had the discussion on as we continue this override because it, we have to go out every five years. Five years, okay. That what happens, you have a seven year override, but the funding mechanism starts decreasing after the fifth year. So that uh, decreases in the fifth year, sixth year, by the seventh year, it is gone. So we go out early enough so that we do not have a decrease in that funding. Our governing boards met on that and determined that they would ask uh, for a continuation of the 10% and not ask for a 15%. They felt that the community has always been supportive uh, of the programs for students and wanted to honor that and maintain what we have but not ask for additional funds at this time. So again, an override is a mechanism that we're allowed to go out to our community and ask for an increase uh, to our budgets. So but, there's a misconception that um, the local taxpayers really set how much schools can spend. It's mm -hmm. set by the legislature. So the override is a local mechanism that allows you to, in essence, override what the legislature has set as a cap in, so in, it, in spending. It gives people local control. It does. If they feel that their children don't get enough from the state legislature, um, there's so many programs that overrides provide, then they, the, the local community can say, I want my children to have band. I want my children to have these other programs that the state mm -hmm. would not furnish. It does. Right. The, the state funding is very limited, and I'll, I'll have Dr. Ty talk on that a little bit later, too. But the state funding is very limited. And in that funding, school districts um, have the bare essentials to offer the core, the core curriculum that mm -hmm. students need, the reading, the math, the sciences, social studies. But it, our budget is 85 to 90 percent spent on salaries and benefits mm -hmm. for um, the services that we provide. So there's very little in there to provide anything else. 
so salaries and benefits for teachers and we all know that teachers are not the highest paid employees in the in the community no, they're not and yet they probably do the most wonderful things for people and children in our community and are underappreciated very often yes they are oftentimes <clears throat> even with all these state funding cuts and all of that teachers go out and they they dig in their own pockets to provide um, paper and colors and scissors and it's things for their children <laughs> yes <laughs> yes they estimate that a teacher spends about five hundred dollars um, at the beginning of the year just at the beginning of the year to get their classroom ready out of their own pocket so those are things that you know I think the public needs to know that there's quite a sacrifice there you know that teachers make to ensure that their their students have whatever they can afford to give That's them true. themselves to add to what the public supports That's so very true. the public's um, support in these times with with the economy the way it was it just doesn't quite stretch and with the state reducing funds and we'll get into how much has been reduced um, we've talked about the 10 percent so they could uh, the boards could ask for 15 percent yes they could. but they decided together to ask for 10 and this is simply a continuation right. of it's what is it's not a new tax it's, it's not an in increase it's not an increase mm -hmm. it's just a continuation mm -hmm. Okay. And we've been very fortunate. It's been great support from both the city and the community at large. Um, Mingus has had the override in effect since 1985 and Cottonwood Oak Creek since 1993. So these have been around a long time. Absolutely. Yeah, 1985, that'd be about 27, 28 years. Mm -hmm. Close to so longer years. than yeah. 20. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not longer than the 20 that I had read about. Okay, so why do schools need these funds? Well, you know, you mentioned, if you don't mind, no, please. Um, a few minutes ago about some of the state cuts. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, um, some research was done on that. Um, the um, Center for Budget and Policy, something or other, had done a study very recently, and they found that Arizona, unfortunately, led the nation in cuts to education over the last five years at about 22%. So, you know, both uh, my district, Barbara's district, kind of looked at, well, what did that mean to us locally? Mm -hmm. And um, it was actually kind of staggering. We, um, we looked at it and found that it was, um, what, about $3.1 million in cuts on your budget? Yes. So you know, was, I think we were closer to a six. Let me check I'm sorry, you, yes. were, you mm -hmm. were at six million. Mm -hmm. and six we were million. At, and yes. Yeah, they were just under six million. We were just over three million. Yes. And so, those you know, were the cuts to your yeah. budget? In, in six total million. over the last six years. So, That's those are cuts that we've huge. absorbed. I mean, because your budgets, your budget this year is six? My budget's just under seven million. So, you know, six. It's taking six million away, yeah. It's, it's, so it's, there's it's a lot been of, halved in the past six years. Your yeah. budget, essentially. And you know, both districts, I believe, have been very um, diligent in doing more with less. Absolutely. And, um, but it just means the urgency now um, in override that we've already depended on, and means more now after we've absorbed all those cuts already. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's tough times uh, in education for sure. You know, yeah. with those cuts, both districts have. Um, tried to cut everything except for hitting the classroom and programs for students. So really, any layer that is in there, any efficiencies that could be located, uh, any sharing of services, which Mingus and COCSD have started mm -hmm. sharing some of those services as well. Um, they've been looked at, analyzed, uh, revamped, restructured, and it's been a real painful process in that there's been a lot of great learning opportunities of how we could do things better mm -hmm. and more efficiently while still maintaining great education for our students but it's uh, very important for both of us to make sure that we are offering a full spectrum of uh, choices for our children and opportunities for our children to uh, learn explore and go into um, careers that are going to prepare them to take over the 21st century uh, problems that we don't even know exist yet that they'll be ready to do. That's what people say is that there isn't even job training right now right. for the jobs <laughs> that we'll have in five years. Right. You it, know, I mean, the world is just expanding. It's an exciting the time. Information and knowledge is expanding, and it, the internet it, has changed so many things. And what we're finding with that 
uh, more is being asked of our students and the tools that our students need to succeed, uh, the technology, making sure that we have current technology to meet their needs, uh, making sure our teachers know how to utilize that technology instructionally. So those are all things that also um, the override provides for our districts. Mm -hmm. So both districts have done many painful cuts and you know, it's, I know that even trying to repair buses sometimes is almost beyond the budget's capability with, with current times. And Correct, and a lot of the funding that has been cut was capital funding, so um, the overrides, maintenance and operations, but a lot mm -hmm. of the things that we've put off have been bus maintenance, bus replacements. Um, the business manager for Cottonwood Oak Creek yesterday was telling me about a roof leak, that, you know, there's no funds to repair the roof but it's leaking and mm -hmm. you know we've had a lot of rain and so those are the kinds of things carpet furniture textbooks um, technology telephones yeah our telephone <laughs> system is our, in the dark ages huh so there's just yeah. really a lot of needs and and um, so and we've talked about the state funding covers the core programs so there's still inadequate funds for programs that are proven to engage motivate and support students' unique learning needs. So, okay, let's talk a little bit about how much will it cost a taxpayer? They're already paying it now. That's not going to change. Right. But what is the cost to a taxpayer per month my for each district? My quick analogy, and then he can, uh, Paul can go into some more detail. It's like going and getting a latte, a vente latte for both districts, if you come by a month. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna go out and get a uh, vente latte, you can support programs at the schools. So for Cottonwood Oak Creek School District, it's about $3.58. And um, for- Mingus, it's $1.92. $1.92. On a, on a $100,000 assessed uh, home. A home. So that's pretty a pretty small amount when you compare it to going out for a coffee or a latte or, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's reasonable, mm -hmm. and it does so much. It does. I mean, you know, that amount, I figured out it was $5.50 for the two districts mm -hmm. per month. That's correct. And that does so much to bring programs to our children. So let's talk about what kind of programs, well, let's take a break. I'm running over as usual because I get so interested <laughs> in my oh, guest and yeah. what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. But we're going to, to pause right now and and hear a message from our sponsors. Hello everybody, I am Lou Ann Patterson. My family and I would like to welcome you to the Copper Star Indoor Shooting Range, Northern Arizona's premier shooting sports facility. We offer a 25-yard pistol range, a 50-yard archery range, and Arizona's only 100-yard indoor rifle range. In addition, we have a full-line gun shop as well as an archery pro shop. Come check us out. We're located at Highway 260 and Cherry Road, right next to Out of Africa. Looking forward to seeing you all. Welcome back to Inside Cottonwood. I'm Mayor Diane Jones, your host, and we have our guests, Barbara Uran and Paul Tai with us today. And we're talking about what is an override continuation election. So we were just getting into, before the break, talking about what do override elections provide our children and our youth? What do they do for us in our community? That's the exciting part to talk about for me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I know for both of it, us it is. But let's talk a little bit about some of those programs that we are able to offer. Uh, if we go back earlier, we were talking about some of the cuts that we've had. And just historically, Conwood Oak Creek School District has always had certified nurses at all of our campuses. 
We've had counselors at our campuses. When we started facing so many of the um, reductions in our budget, we had to start reducing. We no longer have certified nurses at all of our campuses, but we do have a certified nurse, district nurse, who oversees health aides. That salary, part of that salary is uh, maintained by the override. We now have 1.5 counselors working with 2,100 students. Again, that is maintained by override funds. We have alternative learning programs. We have uh, three programs for children who are really struggling with some behavior needs, some real high needs, and we're providing some supplemental supports in an alternative program for our junior high students and some of our earliest, youngest learners who have some severe um, unique needs that we uh, service. We provide interventions for our students. It's interesting that uh, we live in a great community. However, our schools serve a large percentage of low income children. Families, mm -hmm. uh, families are struggling in our community. Right. So our district has approximately 73 percent of our families that um, are considered um, in the poverty level. That means that oftentimes our children come to us at that young age without the rich experiences that um, some of our other children get. So we need to help them kind of catch up and get back on board of where the other kids are. Mm -hmm. Those intervention programs are helped. Um, we provide those through funding from our override. We have, um, we're able to offer PE, music, art, uh, those are provided by the override funds. So that full spectrum of wonderful um, things for children, override funds help us support. We get about a million dollars from the override added to our budget. From that million dollars, we are able to provide a more comprehensive program to meet the needs of our children. So without those dollars, those programs would be eliminated. Just very quickly, we, uh, years ago, the state used to fund full day kindergarten. They took that funding away from us. That's one of the chunks of money they took away from us. We offer an extended day program so our kids in kindergarten are with us all day. And again, override dollars help us provide mm -hmm. that program for our children. So the sports, the PE, the athletics, the student interventions are some of the things that our district does. Paul's district does some great things. Uh, that over sounds there that like, like you're getting a lot of, of bang for the buck we as are. the term goes for the override funds. You do a lot with that money. We absolutely do. To increase a child's education and give them more tools and that's to cope with really the real important, world. Really important because yes. none of that money goes into any administration. That is all geared to children. Mm -hmm. It is all mm -hmm. student driven. So that's a that's, thank you for bringing that up. That's a very good point. And Dr. Tai? We have very similar offerings, um, just you know, bigger kids. Mm -hmm. the, uh, <laughs> right. the override provides us about $600,000 a year. And with that, we have been able to maintain what I would say is reasonable class sizes for Arizona. They're small. Um, they're still big compared to other parts of the country. But um, you know that is a factor as well as the, the class sizes we've been able to maintain through the override. We have an alternative program for our struggling learners as well as interventions um, for those who need extra academic support. We have a tremendous fine arts department. Um, oh, you do. Just, the, the theaters that they right. and the plays they present to the community are just Wonderful. Yeah, and we're well known for that, and you know we couldn't do that without the override. We have a very strong athletics program, and um, you know a lot of the community comes out, loves to watch football games, things like that. Our athletics are supported directly by the override. That's and interesting. Well, one thing is also uh, to note on that is the research is very clear that when we offer these kinds of programs for students, it helps keep students engaged. And kids that are engaged in their schools academically do better. So their achievement is better. So these are not frivolous programs. These are programs, whether it's um, sports, whether it's uh, intervention programs, whether it's the band, whether it's art, whatever it is, those are things that grab students and keep them actively involved and in their keep schools. their interest it so does. that they want to complete school right. you know right. and it, it makes a difference and you know we're nearing the end of their um, 
public school a um, academic career and preparing them for college and career readiness, they, um, you know, their exposure to many of the fine arts, the elective courses we're able to offer through the override, if they don't have that, they, uh, they might miss out on opportunities that would be, you know, future careers for them, as well as, um, you know, scholarships, not having the um, ability to, uh, to tap their fine talents and showcase mm -hmm. it. You know, colleges give them scholarships for that. Absolutely. And it, uh, you know, makes a difference, you know, especially when we're talking about high school dropout rates being very high in Arizona. Um, sometimes those are the hooks that, that keep mm -hmm. kids engaged with school, and, and you need that. We were talking during the break about Arizona being 48th um, per pupil. Is it per pupil funding? Yeah, Is that how you it's 48th by two different measures if you look okay. at per pupil funding or in money spent on education. You know, okay. There's different groups look at it differently in both, both ways. We come up uh, at 48th <laughs> wow. and we uh, come up at about 73.6% of the national average. So we spend you know, less than 75 cents on the dollar compared to the average across the U.S. So two states and, are below us. Yeah. So there's two and states it, below and us. It, always, it hasn't always been that way. No, Back uh, like in the, was it 1970s. It was we were 1970. in the you know middle of the pack and 29, we 29. 29. Yes. and it's been so, a, a steady decline. <laughs> we seem to be going the wrong way. <laughs> exactly. So I think going into our, our second break, you are truly doing more with a lot less. Um, need to be commended for your efforts. I, I it's very commendable to think about how much your budgets have been reduced in the past six years and what you're doing and this override funding just really i mean it's still you're still in pretty dire straits even with that funding mm -hmm. of trying to furnish the services that you need to to our children but that takes a little of the pressure off and provides so much because this is about our children this isn't about us it's about an education for our children so that they can go out into the world and find a good job and be ready to find jobs, to go to school, to college, and to be successful. That's correct. So a latte every month is really not much to ask for all the services that are provided for that sacrifice on a taxpayer's part, really, mm -hmm. because paying taxes is difficult, too. Mm -hmm. But this is really what it, what it provides takes such a small amount from we taxpayers. So, okay, time for a break. We'll be right back in just a minute. Having a fire escape plan is very important to keep your family safe and together in the event of a fire. When you awake to the sound of a smoke detector and smoke in your room, don't stand straight up. Carefully roll off your bed and stay low under the smoke. If your door is shut, feel the door with the back of your hand. Slowly open the door if no heat is felt. Always stay low until you get to the outside of your home. Always have two ways out of your house and a specified meeting place somewhere outside your home. Home escape plans should be drawn up and rehearsed on a regular basis. This could be the difference between life and death if caught in a fire. Welcome to Inside Cottonwood. We're back from our break and we're talking with Dr. Paul Tai and Superintendent Barbara Uran about the override election that will be coming up November 5th. That's correct. Is, yeah. But the, the ballots actually, will go out, the, the mail-in ballots. The week of October 14th, the, the county will be mailing 14th. them to all registered voters. So okay. the last day to register to vote, which is important, is October 7th. So okay. if people aren't registered, they can still do so through October 7th and participate in this election. And this, this is an all mail-in ballot. So for both not, schools. Yes, and yes. they will okay. have two, they'll be asked two questions. And the question is the budget override continuation, yes. Okay. Or budget continue override? No. So those would be there'll be a question for Mingus Union High School mm -hmm. District 
and a question for Cottonwood Oak Creek School District. Okay, and those are the only two things on the ballot? Yes. Okay, so they, there won't be a lot of confusion or other information, there it's just not this issue itself. And to register to vote, you can do that online through the Secretary of State's office. Um, we, we have, have forms at yes, both of the There's schools, forms at both offices. of the schools, so just drop in at the office at one of the schools and pick up your voter registration form, or you can go to the post office, I believe, or county building, county building Street, the yes. county building. I believe the city has has um, forms that you can register to vote. So it you know it doesn't have to be difficult, and it, it can be done online. It's very simple. Very simple. Hey, Mayor, one of the things also, um, Dr. Ty and I are very interested in getting the information out because we find that when people have that information, they can make better decisions from that. Absolutely. So we're always willing to come out um, to any organization or any group or neighborhood. That's a good point. And um, visit and give the facts. Mm -hmm. And uh, they can contact us at our school districts. I think we have that information on this show, mm -hmm. uh, but we're always more than Absolutely. willing to come out, and we don't take much time. We're pretty right. quick. <laughs> I noticed that you're giving out your email addresses, your personal school email yes. addresses to the public. They can contact you directly or mm -hmm. call mm -hmm. either of you. So it, it's anybody that has a question, we want to answer those questions. Correct. Absolutely. And make sure that they get their information so they can make an informed vote mm -hmm. on this issue. So the hardest part to talk about, and we just have about three or four more minutes here, is what happens if overrides aren't continued? What kind of impact is that going to have on both of your schools? It'll, Dr. Tai? It'll be quite frankly devastating. Um, you know, as we've outlined, you know, the cuts we've already absorbed have meant there's, you know, it's not even about talking about fat on the budget. It's, you know, we've already cut into programs and um, staff and, you know, doing further damage would be um, bad for our kids. And you know, it, it does have an impact on the local economy. It uh, would hurt the city's efforts to attract businesses and um, you know, limit the opportunities for our kids, both with extracurriculars, extra support, and um, you know, elective courses, athletics, um, some of the nursing stuff that Barbara outlined. You know, those things, class sizes, would, we'd have larger class sizes, which make it harder on teachers to individualize learning and, and give kids assistance as they need it, so it would it would be tough, very tough. Yeah, I will echo exactly what he said, and again, I just want the community also to know that um, we don't sit idle, and when I say that, I mean we are always, again, looking for ways to make things better. When we talk about the cuts that we have taken, when I say there's been some great things from that, the city and Cottonwood Oak Creek School District share a PE position. Absolutely. So we managed to save some funds and still provide some great programming mm -hmm. for our children at Oak Creek School and the Recreation Center mm -hmm. by that shared position. That's been a we great share partnership. several administrative positions between our districts and we also have shared positions with other districts. Yes. And so. the city collaborates with the officer, the dare it's not the Yes. Officer. It's, it's a so safe, school safety, school right. safety for officer, both, SRO. For both districts. <laughs> for both districts. Yes. So again, we continue to have these conversations. We meet on a regular basis. We meet with the Verde Valley superintendents, always having that discussion on how can we do things um, better for kids uh, and with greater efficiencies for our taxpayers. We are very fortunate to live in a community that supports education, and we don't take that lightly, and we want to make sure that we are providing the most we can on the dollars that we have for the children in our community. Absolutely, I, I understand that. So, um, technology for college and career prep oh, yes. <laughs> preparation, that's something that could be impacted. I mean, there's just so much. It's, yeah. it's really hard to cover it. You've talked about nursing and counseling um, increase in class size. So I think we've, we've pretty much covered this electives music, art, drama, PE, athletics, and, and you know, just having art in a school. Can you imagine a school with no art? I know I can't. You know, or a community with no art. Mm -hmm. I mean, art is just it's adds a to a quality of life. Right. And it is, a, these are languages. Mm -hmm. It is a, there's art Expression. literacy, there's music mm -hmm. literacy. This is where our history comes from. So these are, um, talents and skills we want to continue to And we cultivate. have some very talented young we do. ladies and gentlemen. There's some very fine artwork that has 
we've been recognized for and uh, you know it starts with the feeders from the elementary schools having programs and then uh, you know the high school the talents really shine and that's and again we're anxious to get these things out to our community so our community can see uh, what we're doing so again I would encourage the community if you want our students to come and perform for you to uh, demonstrate to you absolutely we'll send them out or we have open door visits we take groups through our schools and let them see the things that are happening uh, they're not scary places they're <laughs> yeah. wonderful places with great kids right and you're going to be coming to a Cottonwood City Council meeting October 1st I think it is the first meeting in October and bringing your student council representatives yes, from are. several of your schools mm -hmm. and um, you're pr participating in iCivics this year which mm -hmm. is a Sandra Day O'Connor project and it's no cost to the schools so right. it just there's lots of ways that you find to do things for free yes, for even you. Right. and you take those opportunities and and help our children with them. So we have about 30, 30 seconds apiece, and I'll let you each add anything that I may have forgotten to ask, if, or just kind of wrap it up. And well, I just want to express again appreciation on behalf of the, the school board and the, the, uh, the kids, really. The students, I know, appreciate the opportunities they have, and we've been afforded great support from the community and, um, and from the city, and it's, it's much appreciated. Thank you. I will go with that. Well, we do appreciate everything that um, this community does for kids in our area. And to just kind of um, say right back to you that we appreciate as community members what you do for our children. You are with our children all day long. Mm -hmm. And we're with our children in the evenings, basically, <laughs> and on weekends. I mean, you, you impact their lives so greatly and you help them become good people, people that will be part of our community and, and serve our community and raise families. And so it's, it's good stuff that it schools is. do. And you are definitely appreciated, each of you and each teacher and each support staff member. You are all appreciated by our community. Well, thank, thank you. you. And it does take that village. It's not oh, yeah. in isolation. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a it takes a community. So thank you both for being here today. If anyone from our audience, our television audience, would like Dr. Tai or Superintendent Uren to come and visit with you in your neighborhood or at your coffee um, or at your organization's event, they would be glad to come and talk with you and help you understand what this means to our community. With that, we'll close, and we will be back with Inside Cottonwood in our next episode. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome.